Coming on to what we're doing here today and why I personally, having been around the food world now for quite a number of years, um, why I think this is the most exciting project going is, first of all, Guys and Tommies have serious commitment. They're committed to this for the long haul, and the long haul meaning 10 to 20 years. They also see it in the round. They understand that it's not just a case of pulling one string here or another string there. We've got to pull a lot of strings all together to change the absolute way that we live and work and breathe in our cities. We have to get kids access to vegetables. We have to get them access to clean air, to being able to play outside. We have to reinstate the notion that meals are wonderful things. We have to work with the industry and in certain cases against the industry. But I'm really pleased that Tim Smith from Tesco's is here today because we've got some big projects coming up that are working with the industry. Very important, as I say, it's 10 years. When I was at City Hall, we did, Mark and Jonathan, both of whom are here, and I, did a big project called The Flagships, in which we attempted to do something similar to this, But uh, and Henry Dimbleby, who's right there in front of me. Um, looking very glum, Henry. Smile. <laughs> it's not that bad. Um, and we were funded by the Department of Education, by the GLA, but in the end, the funding ran out. The political will was just not quite strong enough. It is about political will. It's about the will of everybody here. So I am, as I say, I'm really thrilled to be part of this project and to be part of what I hope will be a really interesting process of learning and sharing and doing and succeeding because we have to succeed. We can't condemn another generation of kids to just not just getting by not very well. We want them to be to thrive. So I'd now like, we've got lots and lots of things to hear today, lots of great speakers, so we're going to whiz on through. I first want to welcome Kieran Boyle, and he's going to tell you about, this is the basic report from which everyone's working. You've all got it. It's called Bite Size, and I, I see there is even a Bite Size version. There can be no more important responsibility than the health of our children, and with one in ten kids now starting school obese, we all need to be doing better. We all need to be doing much better. Um, so we're Guys and St. Thomas's charity. We're an independent, place-based foundation uh, who work in inner city London on complex urban health challenges. And our model is to test and explore ideas here in Lambeth and Southwark and then share what we find with others working on similar challenges in similar urban areas, both in the UK and internationally. Now, childhood obesity is one of our small number of priorities, as Rosie said, uh, and with our partners, we're in the early years of a decade-long multi-million program looking to address the issue locally. Um, and we focus on childhood obesity uh, because London has the highest rates of childhood obesity of any peer city, because it disproportionately affects the most disadvantaged communities, and because its effects play out over a lifetime. And to inform our work, we've spent the past year trying to explore how the issue plays out uh, in inner city areas, looking at kind of what sits behind obesity rates, but also, more importantly, what can we do within these inner city areas to tackle uh, childhood obesity. And that's a report that we're re releasing today. So bite size, breaking down the challenge of childhood obesity. Um, I'd really recommend the report to you, not least because we need to take 150 copies back to the office um, otherwise. What the report does is it looks at what behavioural science, lived experience and insights from leading practitioners tells us about how we can tackle this challenge. And it also sets out a series of principles that anybody else is looking to start off a childhood obesity programme. Now, there's a great deal of insight in the report, but I'd just like to pull out three particular bits of it to you. Firstly, how the issue of childhood obesity is framed. Secondly, the problem of inequality. And thirdly, the role of cumulative and collective action. So firstly, on how the issue is framed. There's a very clear story that sits in the public's mind about childhood obesity, that it's an issue about individuals, it's an issue about willpower, it's an issue about people making bad choices. And if you frame the issue that way, then the answer is pretty clear. You just need to educate people as to what the right choices are and leave them to get on with it. The problem is that that simple narrative overlooks much of the evidence from behavioural science on what might be a truer explanation, that childhood obesity is a normal response to abnormal environments. And David Halpern will explain this well to us, but how we consume food is often not a conscious decision. 
It's rather an automatic response to cues in our environment. And inner city environments increasingly bombard us with an overwhelming amount of opportunities to eat high energy food and be insufficiently active. But perhaps what's most fascinating is when you ask people who have lived experience of these obesogenic, often poor inner city environments, what they think causes childhood obesity. And their answer, it's again about individuals, about individual willpower and about people making bad choices. And that's really significant because it tells us that this framing of childhood obesity as a problem about individuals devoid of the environments in which they're based is the norm. The problem is that's at best only partially true and probably false. And we really need to change that story if we're going to make any meaningful progress on this issue. The second thing that really stands out almost hides in plain sight. So, um, so I'm going to try something here. Bear with me. Can I ask about three people in each row to stand up on this side of the room? Three people in each row just to stand up. That's roughly it. OK, can I ask everybody to stand up over here? Brilliant. OK, so this relative weighting, this is the childhood obesity deprivation gap. The difference in childhood obesity rates between the richest areas and the poorest areas. You can all sit down. Thank you. <laughs> the point being that this is huge. And it hides in plain sight. And this childhood obesity deprivation gap has grown by 50% over the past 10 years. So I think we all know that there's a clear relationship between childhood obesity and deprivation, but I sometimes wonder whether we all give it sufficient regard. So just take, for example, two local areas. So first up uh, is Dulwich Green, just down the road, has an average household income of about £60,000, uh, one in five residents of minority ethnic background, and one in ten kids are obese. Compare it to Camberwell Green, also close by. Here, average household incomes are about £30,000, Three in five residents are of minority ethnic backgrounds, and one in three kids is obese. And that's just wrong. So that's the second thing that we would pull out as significant, that we need to break this link between deprivation and obesity. Because whilst childhood obesity is a problem everywhere, we do need to focus efforts where they're most needed. And the third and final thing that stands out to us is how many different actors need to be involved in addressing this problem. The environments our children's pass through, so homes, schools and streets, are influenced by us all. By our governments, yes, but by businesses and our neighbours. Now that sort of collective action, that can seem overwhelming, or alternatively, we can look at it much more positively and say we all get to play a part in this. Because the evidence is that while the issue is complex, the solutions don't have to be. Most important seems to be to get going, to focus on marginal and sustainable changes that probably aren't transformational overnight, but that do add up over time, and try to be as comprehensive as possible in addressing the many different drivers of unhealthy weight. And the evidence from other cities is that this cumulative and coordinated action works. So certainly that's the approach that we're taking to our own programme, uh, and why we're partnering with the Mayor of London and Public Health England to create a new London-wide Chartered Obesity Task Force to drive activity across the capital. So to close, our belief is that this is an important moment on Chartered Obesity for real moment, with real momentum for doing what's needed growing across the UK, due in no small part to people who are presenting, the panellists and people in the audience today. And our hope is that these three points, that we need to focus on environment, that we should focus extra efforts on tackling the deprivation gap, and that progress is possible, but only with cumulative and collective action, can mark a significant turning point in not only what we need to do, but how we need to go about it. And if you agree, uh, well, then we hope you might consider partnering with us in this mission as we develop our own 10-year programme to tackle childhood obesity locally. So thank you. Got a great morning ahead of us. Do please enjoy. Thank you.